on Saturday, James Harden was frustrated all game long by Josh Hart going two for 18 on three-pointers. That frustration led to this hilarious moment of Harden throwing the ball down and angrily and it bounced back to hit him in the face. Now, after the game, Harden was asked about this moment. Oh, ow, take a listen. Oh, ow. You slammed the ball at the end of the first half. Did that hurt? No, I got my beard, so it just protected me. <laughs> <laughs> Harden is having a semi-historically historic start to the season in the wrong direction as far as inefficiency from three, volume of three. The Rockets were able to get the win this weekend thanks to Russ being brilliant and despite Harden and thanks to the competition a bit, New Orleans not a great team, but Harden struggled. What's the key to that? You just keep shooting? Just keep Well, that's keep Harden's shooting? key. So that's what he's been doing. <laughs> yeah. you, what, what do you tell him? No, common sense would tell you to <laughs> maybe try to get something easier. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. What they would... Uh, Conventional wisdom is try to get to the free throw line. That they see saying get an easy bucket, right? Just like, get the two but, somehow. But, don't worry about. But as far as get your sh your stroke going back, it would, for most guys we get the free throw line. But his free throw stroke is so different from his three point shot, which he is really being affected by. It would appear the, the emphasis they're putting on not giving him the foul calls and calling him if he initiates the contact. Keep shooting, James. Just keep doing it. Time for stories to start your morning. The Astros took down the National 7-1 yesterday. They take a 3-2 World Series lead. Game 6 heading back to Houston Tuesday night on Fox. Nick, did the Astros wrap up a World Series this weekend with what you saw? See, I don't think they wrapped it up, but they are back to being heavy favorites the way they were at the beginning of the series. We've yes. seen road teams go 5-0. and Obviously, the Nationals got a gut punch yesterday with the Scherzer mm -hmm. news, but the story is the Nationals' bats went cold in Washington, scoring one run in each game, and the Astros hit 390 with runners in scoring position in Washington. That was the difference in this three-game set. Right. There was no chance that the Nationals were going to sweep the Astros, and now you're asking me, is this over with? Yeah, it's over with because there's no way the Nationals are going to sweep the Astros by winning four. They won the first two there. Now they'd have to win the other two there. No, this Astros team, top to bottom, is too good. And the pitching that they've gotten has been too good. Road teams 5-0 and so far in the World mm -hmm. Series. How about that? On to some football. Drew Brees returned for his first game yeah, in more than though Dusty won't be there. Yeah, that's five true. weeks and didn't miss a beat. Brees finished 373 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Saints take down the Cardinals 31 to 9. The Saints now an impressive 7 and 1 with a healthy and now rested Drew Brees. See how impressive was Brees in his return? As if he didn't miss. If you didn't know, you weren't following the league and you just picked up the stat sheet from his logs from game 1 until now, you've been like, wow. That was an amazing performance by him. But now, knowing that he uh, it did overcome the injury and when he got injured, Jenna He's so serious about his job. He stayed in Los Angeles to get the procedure and stayed there for two weeks. As far as straight rehab, 14 days, there with the therapist, that's part of the benefit of him being out there yesterday. And if you, I watched this game closely because I want to see how Breeze looked and Kyler's always fun. It took Breeze an entirety of one quarter to knock the rust off. Once you got to early in the second quarter, he looked like the Drew Breeze of old. When we heard he might be out six weeks, now he only missed five. The fact that they went 6-0, and the last time they lost was that loss against the Rams where he got hurt. It is unbelievable what they were able to do without him, and now they got him And back. a lot of people were saying, oh, he shouldn't play. They should, Teddy, they can beat Arizona with Teddy. But you know something? We don't see greatness if he don't play. That's why I always push for guys, when you can play and you're healthy enough, get yourself back in there. 273 yards passing. All right, on to the Texans. It was a bittersweet 27-24 win for them over the Raiders yesterday as all-pro defensive end J.J. Watt suffered a season-ending pec injury. Said on social media he felt absolutely gutted about having to shut it down for the season. See, how concerning is the injury for the 5-3 and three Texans? Well, the thing J.J. Watt was going to be healthy, it's been a long season since he's been healthy. But this does hurt their overall chances. Their offense is starting to come around. And even I see signs as far as Bill O'Brien managing the game. How they put this roster together is very, very promising. But this is going to lead because not only is J.J. hurt, 
Remember, they traded away wow. Clowney. Right. So now, as far as elite rushers, they it's don't Whitney have one. Whitney Merciless. It's, it, now, it, yeah, he's every, a good football player, but he's not an elite rusher. And every team is going to focus on stopping him as far as the pass rush, and they know that's all they're going to have to do. The Texans, it, listen, it took some Deshaun Watson brilliance for them to get this win. They were trailing for most of this game, most of the fourth quarter. I, but they, the other injury in this game, Laramie Tunsil left the game with a shoulder injury. They obviously don't have depth on their offensive line is a as bad of a week where you get a win can be that's what this was for the Houston Texans all right moving on to the Panthers and the 49ers Tevin Coleman went off for 105 rushing yards and four total touchdowns three coming in the first half and the Niners defense showed out once again finishing with seven sacks three interceptions bringing Kyle Allen back down to earth Niners win big 51-13 they remain undefeated on the season See, you were on this San Francisco bandwagon before any of us really jumped on. Are these Niners now officially a force to be reckoned with in the NFC? Well, they play a style that is always in vogue in the league. Physically getting after the quarterback. They have so much talent on the defensive front. You knew ultimately Cal Shanahan, he would get that offense um, squared away. But did they have enough talent offensively? Made the trade. For Emmanuel Sanders, he comes in, makes an impact immediately after playing in a very, very similar offense. They create the turnovers, and they explode on the team. This is the best win that they've had. This is the only team, even though they did beat the Rams, there was no team that has faced them that's been hot. So it yep. was nice for them to be able to measure themselves because everyone's like, oh, man, Kyle Allen. They shouldn't even put Cam Newton back in there. Hmm. We'll see what people are saying this week. So it was a good test for them. The one thing going into this contest that we I think we missed on was Cal Shanahan had a lot of experience playing against Carolina's defense when he was in Atlanta. 2015 was his first year there as Atlanta's defensive coordinator. They had success, and he took that in the game plan and took advantage of some things, some tendencies that that Carolina team does. But great win for San Francisco. Their quarterback played well enough, but the play calling of Kyle Shanahan to me with that defensive front, those are the two stories of this game. And the ability to just continue pressing your advantage. You saw that you had an edge as far as their inability to stop your running game, and they never could adjust, they being Carolina. And San Francisco, up to and including the very end of the first half, Tevin Coleman rips one off for what was it, 48 yards for a touchdown. He, The, the Niners ran the ball for two. 130 yards. They're running the ball this year 39 times per game to go along with just an elite pass rush. They, I mean, they, they had spent a ton of resources on that defensive line before this offseason. Nicky Bosa might be worth all those resources combined with his true. They've drafted a lot of guys high. He's the first one that, even though he was drafted that high, is overperforming to his draft position. Like the Niners, right? I'm not shocked that they won. I don't think anyone should be shocked that a team with the defense that good beat a backup quarterback but for them to score 50 for them to dominate this football game the, the way they did that to me was shocking that this was not a competitive game I thought this would be a close low scoring football game it was anything but Nikki Bosa four tackles three